Up today, how to replace an interior door. Hi everybody, this is Tool Dude Tony, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode on how to fix your 101. This is the first of a two-part series on how to replace an interior door. We're going to replace this door in such a way that we can retain the old door frame and the trim, we can retain the hinges and the hinge locations, and also the old doorknob. In the first of the two episodes, I'm going to show you how to take down your old door and use it to mark your new door to make sure you have the exact placement that you need for those hinges. In the second episode, I'm going to show you how to mark for the proper placement of the doorknob and how to cut all the holes and things to make that work. So, let's get started. It's pretty easy to remove a door. Typically, you just need to pull the hinge pins. There's usually one at the top, one at the bottom. I'd like to point out that the technique that we're going to use here for this exchange is one where we leave the original hinges in place, both on the top and the bottom, and we'll match the new door to the old hinge location. That way you don't... One of the first things you're going to want to do is to measure your door. You need to know how wide it is so you can go down to your box store and pick out whatever kind you really like. Let's measure this one. You just got to do it from side to side. This one is a 29 and 7 8 inches, which equates to a 30 inch door. So be sure you get your measurements and then go. The uh, top to bottom measurement is pretty standard throughout, and uh, so I wouldn't worry about that unless you're in a really old house that has some really, uh, you know, custom door sizes. Set your uh, old door, your original door on the sawhorses. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the hinges from the old door. I'm just using a Phillips screwdriver. Um, I'm not going to reuse these hinges, but if you are, make sure you save your screws and the hinge itself. Remove the doorknob and the latch assembly. Okay, bottom comes off, top comes off. Then you can just slide this latch piece out. Here's a little tip from the tool dude. I like to uh, gather up all the parts that I remove from whatever I'm working on, whether it's a car or doors or uh, cabinets, you name it. Put it in some sort of a plastic bin so you can always find it. I typically don't throw anything away until after I know I have the new piece installed and it's working just fine. You may need it. Okay, next, determine which is the top of your old door. Typically your doorknob's going to be in the lower half. So, and your new door, using these panel doors, it has uh, six panels with these little panels at the top. You want to make sure you get that at the top or your door's going to look really funny. Now make sure that your new door is flushly aligned with your old door. Set it on top, make sure these edges are, are perfectly aligned all the way down, and you're ready to go. So for this step, you need some very simple tools. You need a pencil to mark your lines. You'll need a square to basically transfer this, uh, the markings from one door to the other. And a Phillips screwdriver, I'm using an electric one here, but you can use a regular manual screwdriver also. This is a, a left-handed screwdriver for you new guys. Now I'm going to use a simple square and a pencil to transfer the measurement from where the old hinge is to where the new hinge will go. So I'm just making sure this is lined up flush using my finger to feel it. Draw a line there. Do the same thing on this other side. Just make sure it's absolutely flush here. Draw your line. Now, something else I want to point out. If you notice, this hinge is cut out all the way on the top here. But there's a portion of the wood that's still there at the bottom. So we want to just mark this so that I know when I cut my mortise in here for the new hinge that I, that I leave this space on this side. It's very important to do that. Now, I want to point out something here. This is the bottom of the door. If you notice, the new door is a little bit longer than the old door. You may have to cut some of this off at some point, but don't do it now. Go ahead and you want to test fit this and all. Make sure that the door rides over your carpet or whatever you have. A lot of these doors, especially on these houses from the 70s, were cut up extra high to get over the shag carpeting. Most carpet is much lower than that now, and you could just go with the standard length of these doors. Now, to cut out the hole for the mortise where that hinge is going to go, there's a couple of different ways you can go on that. You can either use some uh, chisels and a hammer and basically just use brute force to try and uh, get the shape that you need out of the door. That does work, by the way. Or you can do what I'm going to do here and show you. This is a Ryobi, what are they calling this? The door installation, the door hinge installation kit by Ryobi. If you have an assistant, this would be a good time to bring them in. You could have them hold the door for you. Since I don't have an assistant, I'm going to use my Rockwell jaw horse. Okay. 
Remember those marks that we placed on here in the section that we were going to leave on the back? We're going to cut out this middle section. We want to place this so that the edges of this are lined up side to side. Now this side with the orange, there's a lot of room here. That means it's going, the router bit's got plenty of room to basically cut this edge out. But the collar on the router bit's going to bang into, run against this blue piece of plastic here and allow us that uh, little quarter of an inch gap that we needed at the end here of wood that stays back on the door. So now that I have this lined up side to side and I'm sure that I've got this thing oriented properly on the door, we'll go ahead and clamp this down. Doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to hold it in place. This would be a good time to put on your eye protection and your dust protection. All right, so now I've got my router set up. I'm gonna go ahead and set it in here, away in the space over on the side here that we that's allowed for it. Turn it on. Take this off. Okay, now we've got the little space of wood that we talked about. We have the mortise for the hinge to sit in. And if you're using a hinge with rounded corners, look at how that fits. But now if you're using a hinge with square corners, and we're gonna have to cut this out just a little bit here, cut this corner out so this has a place to sit. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and square off these corners using a chisel. You can probably use a uh, straight, or. Just going to tap it in there a little bit, align the, the chisel with the flat edge, same thing, just pop that little corner out, should be good, the hinge fits in there just like it should. Now you also notice that there's a front and back to the hinges, there's a, where the holes are, it's sort of beveled out on one side, kind of out towards an angle, and then this side has no beveling at all. The side without any beveling is the side that goes down towards the door. Just going to mark this top hole, put a, put a center mark here, start my screw. All right, with uh, both hinges connected with just one screw in the top hole, we can go ahead and take this in and do a test fit. Okay, I'll just line the door. We'll take this hinge, I like to hold on to the bottom of it, put a hinge pin in it, partially, down through maybe the first barrel of the other hinge. Do the same thing down below. Hopefully it lines up. It did. That's it. Make sure it fits nicely to the door frame. Looks pretty good. Okay. That's pretty easy. It fit. Once you're satisfied that the door is swinging properly and closing properly and that everything's aligned, go ahead and drill a couple of pilot holes right in the center of where the screw will go. Doesn't have to be very deep maybe half inch tops and we go ahead and install some screws. These are the same screws I took out before. Do the same with the other hinge. Okay, now we can take the hinge pins back out again. Take the door back down, we'll work on the doorknob next. Oh, yeah, and stay tuned for my uh, next episode on how to do the doorknob part. That's pretty cool too. Tool dude, out of here. Da <laughs>